as you're learning the game, there is so much information to digest. Not only are you learning about ways to gain an advantage and win a game, you're also working on learning the language of chess. If you're not 100% sure what the difference is between notating a check or checkmate, how to notate which rook moves to a square either piece could reach, or if you've never heard of a great move receiving an exclamation mark or a game-losing blunder having a question mark after the move, then this lesson is for you. In this position, white has sacrificed a piece to expose black's king. Let's watch white hunt down black's king as we work on mastering chess notation. White is about to play the powerful pawn move h5 check. We always write the square a pawn moves to. In this case, h5. And since black is in check, we add a plus sign at the end of the move to notate a check. So after white moves the pawn, we write h5, check. Black has only one choice, king h6. White unleashes a great tactical idea. Knight takes e6. When we make a capture, we always write the piece we are going to move, in this case the knight. So a capital N, followed by the capture sign, which is an X, and the square we are going to capture, E6. So after white plays the incredible move, we write knight takes E6. Notice black cannot capture white's knight because by moving the knight, white has discovered the bishop's check against black's king. So after knight takes e6, do you remember what we have to add at the end of the move? That's right, a plus sign, which means check. After knight takes e6 check, black does not want to move the king and allow queen takes g7 checkmate, so black plays g5, blocking the bishop's check. Did you notice that black's pawn moved for the first time in the game, advancing two squares and trying to pass white's pawn on h5? This allows white to play the special pawn move on passant, capturing black's g6 pawn like this. How do we notate this move? Since it was a pawn capture, we write the file the capturing pawn is on before the capture, in this case, the h file, and then we write captures, which is an x, then the square we captured, g6. Since this move is on passant, Sometimes people prefer to write EP, but this is not required. So after we play en passant, we write H takes G6. And since black cannot escape the checks from white's bishop and rook on H1, we write checkmate, which is the pound sign. It's not every day we see an en passant move delivering checkmate. In this game between grandmasters Aaron Nimzovich and Alexander Elekin, we are going to see both players castle on opposite sides of the board. With white to move, Nimzovich is about to castle on the king side. Do you remember how to notate king side castling? There are two squares between the king and rook, so we write 0 dash 0. Black is ready to castle queen side. Notice there are three squares between black's king and rook on a8. So queenside castling is 0 dash 0 dash 0. Let's take a look at another position. In this position, white is about to develop a piece with knight d2, but since both the b1 and f3 knights can move to that square, what should we do? Since we're moving the knight from the b file, we write knight b to d2. In this position, white wants to activate the rook on a1 and attack black's weak c6 pawn with rook c1. Since both rooks can move to that square, can you correctly notate moving the a1 rook to c1? If you noted that since the rook is on the a file and said rook a to c1, great job! Black wants to protect the c6 pawn by moving a rook to a6. Which rook should black move? If black moves the a8 rook, notice it allows rook d8, checkmate. Black should move the rook on a4. When two pieces are on the same file, like in this case, we write the rank of the piece that is going to move. Since we will move the rook on the fourth rank, we write rook 4 to a6. When you are reviewing a game that has been analyzed with notes by a player known as an annotator, 
You may see notation marks after certain moves that suggest the strength of a move. You may see a brilliant move, a game-losing blunder, or something in between. Let's review some of these common annotation symbols from an analyzed game. In this position, white storms the queen side with a4, threatening to trap black's bishop with a5. Black should play a5, blocking white's a pawn. Instead, black plays a6, which turns out to be a serious mistake. When a particularly bad move is played, an annotator may add a question mark to the move, meaning it is a mistake. This was black's 12th move in the game, so you would see 12, a6, question mark. Why is this move such a mistake? After bishop takes c6, b takes c6, can you find white's powerful move that will completely shut out black's dark squared bishop from the game? If you found a5, well done. This is an excellent move which completely shuts out black's bishop. When an excellent move is played, like this one, an exclamation point can be added to the move, so we would see 14, a5, exclamation point. Notice after bishop a7, black's bishop is blocked by both white's queen pawns and black's own c7 pawn, so white is practically playing a piece up in this game. In this sharp position, black's next move may mean the difference between winning and losing the game. What would you play in this position? If you found the powerful move queen h4 check, great job. White's king is forced to the first rank. After king g1, black is ready to promote to a second queen, which we notate just like a normal pawn move, writing the square it will move to, in this case, b1, and then writing an equal sign, followed by the piece we will turn the pawn into with promotion. So b1 equals queen. And since white is in check, we add a plus to the end of the move. After black's accurate play, white cannot avoid checkmate. Let's flip the board around and think about the position from white's perspective. Instead of playing the excellent queen h4 move, it looks natural to immediately promote the pawn with b1 equals queen. We could add a question mark, meaning this is a mistake. When a player makes a game-losing move, also known as a blunder, Sometimes you will see two question marks after the move, like this. Can you see why an annotator may give this move two question marks? Pause the video and see if you can find white's game-winning move. Black appears to be winning, but if you found the incredible h8 equals queen, fantastic work. Black's king is forced to capture the newly promoted queen with king takes h8. Now that the king no longer protects h6, white is able to deliver a forced checkmate, starting with queen h6 check. King g8. Queen h7 check. White's bishop protects the queen, forcing black to play king f8. When white wins the game with queen h8, checkmate. We just learned that a game-losing blunder can be given two question marks, now we are going to see when an absolutely brilliant move can be given two exclamation points. Grandmaster Siegbert Tarash, with the white pieces, finds a brilliant move to finish this game. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can find the move, but don't feel bad if you can't find it. Tarash played the incredibly surprising and powerful move, Bishop C7. Imagine the shock of seeing this move played against you. You may think this move deserves one or two question marks as it looks like it just drops a bishop. But this is a move many annotators have awarded two exclamation points, which means it is considered a brilliant move. Not only is bishop c7 the strongest move that forces checkmate, it is also a surprising move. White is threatening both queen b7 and rook takes c5, checkmate. If black plays queen takes c7, White has the powerful move rook takes c5 check, which forces black to give up protection of the key b7 square after queen takes c5. White has the crushing move queen b7 check, with checkmate to follow on the next move. Black's other option is to play rook takes c7. If white could safely play rook takes c5, the position would be checkmate. 
Can you find a stunning queen sacrifice to distract the rook from protecting the c5 pawn? That's right. White can play queen b7 check. If black plays king takes a5, a rook check on the a file will force checkmate. And if black plays rook takes b7, white delivers checkmate with rook takes c5. When a game is over, is there a symbol we can use to know the result of the game? Yes, there is. If white wins the game, we write 1 dash 0. If black wins the game, we write 0 dash 1. If the game is a draw, we write 1 half to 1 half. You've been doing a great job mastering chess notation. Let's take a look at one more example together. Finally, annotators use symbols to describe interesting and dubious moves. In this typical French defense position, black's most common move is knight c6, adding pressure to the key d4 square. Moves that may look surprising to you or are not obvious can be considered interesting if the move itself is a sound, sensible move that does not harm the position. One interesting move in this position is queen b6. Moving your queen out early is generally not a good idea, but here it is an interesting move which adds pressure to the d4 square. To notate an interesting move, we would write queen b6 and then add the interesting symbol, which is an exclamation point followed by a question mark. Notice if white plays bishop e3, developing a piece and adding another defender to d4, this is actually a blunder because black can win material with queen takes b2. If black plays c takes d4, this move is considered dubious, so we'd add the dubious symbol a question mark followed by an exclamation point. This move is dubious because after c takes d4, although black's position is by no means losing, notice after the trade of pawns black no longer has pressure on the d4 square, and since white no longer has a pawn on c3, white's knight can develop to that excellent square, which was not an option before black's dubious pawn capture. Have you mastered chess notation? Let's prove it in the challenges.